Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. We are gathered together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. All together we say, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, to pray for, for me to the, the Lord, Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray, that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the beginning of the first book of Samuel. There was a certain man from Ramatim, Elkanah by name, a Sufite from the hill country of Ephraim. He was the son of Jeroham, son of Elihu, 
son of Tohu, son of Sop, an Ephraimite. He had two wives, one named Hannah, the other Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah was childless. This man regularly went on pilgrimage from his city to worship the Lord of hosts and to sacrifice to him at Shiloh, where the two sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas were ministering as priests of the Lord. When the day came for Elkanah to offer a sacrifice, he used to give a portion each to his wife Penina and to all her sons and daughters, but a double portion to Hannah because he loved her. Though the Lord had made her barren, her rival to upset her turned it into a constant reproach to her that the Lord had left her barren. This went on year after year, each time they made their pilgrimage to the sanctuary of the Lord, Penina would approach her and Hannah would weep and refuse to eat. Her husband, Elkanah, used to ask her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you refuse to eat? Why do you grieve? Am I not more to you than ten sons? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your meads, O Jerusalem. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. Please all stand. at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is a time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they left their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther, and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called on them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hard men, and followed him. 
May their brothers and sisters, the good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please all be seated. Magandang umaga po sa atin lahat. Let me begin my homily with this poem with the title, The Work of Christmas Begins. It goes like this. When the song of angels is stilled, when the stars in the sky is gone, and when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, then the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal those broken in spirit, to feed the hungry, to release the oppressed, to reveal the nations, to bring peace among all peoples, to make a little music with the heart and radiate the light of Christ every day, in every way, in all that we do and in all that we say, then the work of Christmas begins. Mga kapatid ko kay Kristo, ngayon po ang unang araw sa ordinaryong panahon. Nakikita niyo na naka-green na ako. Balik na po tayo sa ating dating regular o ordinaryong buhay. Wala na ho yung mga Christmas tree dyan sa altar. Naitago na po ang mga parol at mga Christmas lights. Naligpit na ang bilin. At iba pang sumisimbolo ng Pasko. Christmas in the calendar of the church has officially ended. But just like what the poem reminds us, the work of Christmas only begins for us. And in our gospel today, we hear the story of the calling of the first disciples of Jesus. Peter, Andrew, James, and John left everything they have and follow Jesus. They will help Jesus in realizing the vision of the Father. These first apostles, together with other disciples, whom Jesus will call, will eventually accompany him as he fulfills the reason why he is sent for us during Christmas. Kailangan ho ni Jesus pagkatapos niyang ipanganak ng collaborators, cooperators, para gawing ganap ang dahilan kung bakit siya ipinanganak, kung bakit siya naparito. At tayong lahat ho ay inibitahan na gawin ito. Simula ngayong araw. What the poem is telling us after celebrating the season of Christmas, after the Yuletide singing, the merry makings, we are back in the ordinariness of our life. However, we are not ordinaries because we are disciples of Jesus. We are reminded to continue the works of Christmas. Kahit na itago na ang bilin, kahit wala na yung Christmas carol, kahit wala na yung mga parol, patuloy pa rin sana tayong magbigay ng mga ating karakter bilang Kristiyano patungo sa ating kapwa. Gumawa para sa mga nawawala ng landas patungo sa Diyos, tumugon para sa mga nagugutom, ang umalala sa mga hindi na naaalala, at ang magbigay ng hustisya para sa mga nawawala na nito. As we go back to the ordinary season in our liturgical calendar, we are being reminded of the, our calling as modern disciples of Jesus. After the Christmas season, the work of Christmas only begins. Ito ang dahilan kung bakit tayo tinawag ng Diyos na maglingkod sa Kanya. Sana sa araw na ito, patuloy nating alalahanin ng ating Kristiyanong bukasyon. 
Let us not be afraid, my dear brothers and sisters, to start all over again. Because this time, we are not starting from scratch. We are starting from what? Experience. Pagusa na tayong magamba na tumugon uli sa panawagan ng Diyos. Kahit napaka-ordinaryo ng buhay na meron tayo. Amen. Please all stand. As a people chosen by God, let us present before our Father the needs of all people. In every prayer we say, God who calls, bless our lives. God who calls, bless our lives. That our pastors called by God to be fishers of men, may face the challenge of renewal by preaching the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. God who calls, bless our lives. That missionaries may become effective proclaimers of the gospel by their witness of life. Let us pray to the Lord. God who calls, bless, bless our, our lives. lives. That those called by our Lord to his service may respond generously to his call. Let us pray to the Lord. God who calls, bless, bless our, our lives. That the Lord may touch the sick, the sorrowing, the troubled, and those who suffer in mind and body. Let us pray to the Lord. God who calls, bless, bless our, our lives. That our beloved dead may live in the Lord's peace. Let us pray to the Lord. God who calls, bless, bless our, our lives. lives. Lord God, make us fit to carry out any task you wish us to do by the strength of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please all stand. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May your people's oblation, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray, that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devote to entreat through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our truth and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us a share in His fullness. For though He was in the form of God, He emptied Himself and by the blood of His cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, He has been exalted above all things and do and to all who obey Him 
has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth, earth are, are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name, in the name of, of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please all kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the true fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please all stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as you celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please all kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under, under my, roof. my roof, but only but say, say the, the word, word and my soul, my soul shall, shall be healed. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please all stand. Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Ah. Uh -huh.